Hey there, y'all. Prophet David Taylor here. Hello to my Facebook folks. Um, and there's Periscope. Hello. Glad to see you guys. Uh oh, that's kind of. Kind of. There we go. All right. I want to be sure I'm in the center of both. All right, great. God bless you. Uh, let's uh, jump on in. Now, as always, you know what I say all the time. I'm going to give you a lot of information. Okay, so you're going to have to watch this broadcast or this video more than one time to be sure that you get it all. Okay, let's start out with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to come before your God and thank you for your great love and thank you for your precious blood that cleanses us, oh God, because our righteousness comes from you, oh God. We're nothing without you. It's not our love for you, it's your love for us. So we just thank you and praise you. I should speak through my mouth. I surrender my mind, my mouth, my tongue, my heart to the Holy Ghost, oh God. Speak through me, oh God. Use me. Let the words be spoken that you want to be spoken, that you might be glorified, that the saints might be edified, and that the demons might be terrified. We thank you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. All right. So, <clears throat> what's my tagline? My tagline is, God already told you what was going to happen if you would just listen to the prophets. Okay? You hear me talk about it all the time. Take advantage of your advantages as a Christian. As a Christian, you have access to the prophetic. The future is a subset of the prophetic. So being a prophet does not just mean to tell the future. That's not what uh, the word prophet means, and that's not what prophecy is. But prognostication, telling the future, is a subset of prophecy. So in other words, when you seek God through the prophetic, the Lord can tell you stuff before it happens. Why would you not want that advantage as a Christian? <laughs> okay? So God already told you what was going to happen. Somewhere in your Okay, so please, uh, please uh, share this video, like and share as many places as you can. If you want to support my ministry, um, I have a PayPal.me link on all my profiles, and I have an Amazon a Smile link where your donations are tax deductible. I always hashtag everything I do with hashtag PDT, so that's how you find me online. If you look up Prophet David Taylor, there's there's other ones out there with the same name. So look up Prophet David Taylor hashtag PDT. That's me. That's how you find my stuff. Okay? I'm here every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, this time, and on the second Thursday of every month with a broadcast called No More Genies, where I deal with the genie concept of God and getting us out of genie concept so we can actually get into true faith according to the Word of God. Okay? All right, let's jump right on in. Today's prophetic word is, are you living your dream? Okay? Are you living your dream? Okay? So let's look at the scripture basis for that. We're going to look at Psalm chapter 37, verse 4. For those of you that are familiar with the Bible, you've heard this scripture a lot. But those of you that might, you know, not be, you might have heard this too. Uh, very popular scripture. It's not always interpreted correctly. So Psalm 37, 4. Psalm is right in the middle of the Bible in the Old Testament. Okay? Psalm chapter 37, verse 4, I'm reading out of the Berean Study Bible. It says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Let's break some of those words down coming out of the Hebrew. That phrase, delight yourself, you know what it means? It means to be soft, to be pliable. It also means to be luxurious. Mm, that means there's some luxury in God. Okay? God is rich in mercy. God is rich in money, finances. He gave Solomon all that money. God is rich in grace. God is rich in forgiveness. God is rich in wisdom. The Bible says to delight yourself, okay? Get in that luxury. That's why you always hear me say, take advantage of your advantages as a Christian. Delight yourself in the Lord, in Yahweh, and he will give you, uh, it says to give, put, or set in the Hebrew, 
the desires of your heart, the requests or the petitions of your heart, your feelings, your will, your intellect, the center of you. Okay. What that does not mean is that God is a genie and all you have to do is rub the lamp and the Lord will give you what you want. That's not what that means. What that does mean is that God will put his desires for you in your heart. So let's look at it all in context. When you delight yourself in him, that means you're spending time in him, you're spending time in his word, spending time in his presence, in his glory, being filled with his spirit, learning how to be one with him. Then he will put all the things he wants for you into your heart. Why is that so important? I'll tell you why. Because without God, we have wicked desires. Did you know that? Did you know that if you don't let the Lord wash you with his blood, and if you don't let the Lord fill you with his word, and if you don't let the Lord fill you with his spirit, what's going to come out your heart is going to be wicked. Did you know that? All right, I'm going to look up a scripture to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, and that scripture is Matthew 15, 11. It says, a man is not defiled by what enters his mouth, but by what comes out of it. Oh, look at that. Okay. Uh, let me look that scripture up again in Matthew 15. Okay. So we're going to look at Matthew 15, 17. Do not yet ye understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the draught. That means going to the bathroom. Uh, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. Okay? So in other words, what the Lord is telling us is that apart from him, that's who we are. And that's what we want. That's the truth. Let me read that list again. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. That's what's coming out of your heart when your heart is not cleansed and filled by God. So look at Psalm 37, 4 again in that context, that when you learn how to lay back in the luxury of God, when you delight yourself in forgiveness, grace, grace mercy, the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, being filled with the Holy Ghost, spending time in his presence, in his glory. Then he puts those good desires, his desires in your heart. That's what that means. That's what you want. You want the Lord to put his desires in your heart because I just read you the list of what comes out of our hearts apart from him. And you know that's the truth. You know that's who we are apart from Jesus. Okay? So let's take it to the next step. So if the Lord is putting those desires in my heart, what is my part? What is my job? And the answer to that question is, your job is to live your dream. Are you living your dream? Are you chasing and pursuing that thing you've always wanted to do? The thing that's been in your heart since you were a little kid? That, that business you wanted to build? Or are you in the right relationship? Or that portfolio you wanted to build? Or, or that book you wanted to write? Or maybe you wanted to run for office? Or maybe you wanted to work with kids? Or maybe you wanted to work with seniors? Or whatever's in your heart. Are you doing that? Because if you are not living your dream, you are wasting your life. Those dreams come from God. Did you know that? Now, what are some of the problems that we encounter with that? Because number one, we talked about what that verse actually means. Then we talked about who we are apart from God. Number three, I just talked about living our dream. Number four, what are some of the problems that we encounter? Well, see, some of the problems we encounter are dream killers. Dream killers is either the devil or people full of the devil or your own unbelief that come in and choke that stuff out of your heart. Haven't you noticed that so many people that go to school, go to college, right after high school, don't end up in the area <laughs> that they have their degree in? You know why that is? Because sometimes it takes you a while to, to examine yourself, and sometimes it's in the pursuing or the seeking that you discover, what is it that I really want? 
See what I mean? But you don't have to wait till you get college age. You can know what you really want as a child. Did you know that? You don't have to wait no 20 and 30 and 40 years to figure out who it is that you are and what it is that you want. Did you know that? Because it can be in here when you're little. But the problem is, number one, if the devil is just always in your ear and making you believe that you can't do it or that you don't have a right to it, that's a very common mind game that the enemy plays, trying to make you feel like you don't have a right to live your dream or if your parents didn't do their job. Because your parents are supposed to know who you are before you're born. That's why I told you at the top of the broadcast to be sure you are growing in the prophetic. Take advantage of the prophetic. Because if you know how to go before God and move and flow in the prophetic, or if you don't know how to do it yet, if you go to a prophetic church or to a prophet and ask them from, or for a word from the Lord, the Lord will tell you who your children are before they're born. God is the one that knits people together in the womb of the mother. So the Lord knows exactly who you are and exactly what you're supposed to do before you're born. And the Lord will tell the parents that through the prophetic. Did you know that? And it's your job to help your children get on track as fast as you can. What happens when we don't get on track in life as fast as we can? We start experimenting. Why do you think we end up so many places we don't want to be? Why do you think some people have to start over at 40 and 50 and 60? You know why they do that? Because you got off track when you were young. Because either somebody came and snatched that dream out of your heart, or your parents didn't get you on track. Sometimes your parents made you feel like you didn't have a right to your own life. And when you feel that way, you're going to feel shut down and angry, and then you're going to do things to try to medicate that pain because you're not happy. And the reason you're not happy is because you're not living your dream. Okay? Let me tell you another dream killer, dream snatcher, is if you get in the wrong relationship. See, if you get in the right relationship, if you are with someone that God sent into your life, then that someone will have in their heart to help you be all that you're supposed to be. But if you are with someone that is not from God, that person going to be steady trying to change you. Steady trying to change you, steady trying to pull you off the path you're supposed to be on, steady trying to pull you somewhere that you're not supposed to be. That's how you know that relationship isn't from God. Because God is not calling people into your life to stop you from being who you are. When God sends people in your life, it's to help you be who you are and help you to become all that he made you to be. You see that? Okay? And so as believers, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to have the happiness that comes from finding and living your purpose. We're supposed to have the happiness that comes from doing what we were born to do. And if you're not doing that, you are wasting your days. And you only get so many days in this clay body on earth. And then your days on earth are going to be up. So if you're not doing that thing you were born to do, you're wasting your days, days. now. Am I practicing what I'm preaching? Yes, I am. Let me show you. I just released, uh, this is a proof copy, my children's book, Grumpy, Lumpy, Frumpy, and Stumpy. <laughs> That's a children's book. I just had a book launch on that last Tuesday. And I'm sh showing you that to let you know that I'm actually doing what I'm saying. I'm actually living my dream, okay? Because I'm a wordsmith. I write books, I write plays, I write music. I'm a prophet in the spiritual realm, but in the natural realm, I work with words also. I'm an author, and I'm a comic book writer. I can't wait to show you my comic books. Lord have mercy, I got so much stuff going on there, you won't believe it. So anyway, I'm saying that to say to you that I'm practicing what I'm preaching. I'm living my dream. I'm doing what I'm telling you to do. You see that? Because I understand that is my contribution to this world. That is my contribution in life. It's my job to bring up out of me and create this content that God has put inside me. It's my job to write all that out and be sure I deposit it into the world before I leave. You understand? That's what I'm supposed to be doing. Just like I'm sitting here uh, prophesying and teaching and doing what I'm doing now in the spirit, in the kingdom of God, in the natural realm. I'm supposed to be an author, be a songwriter, be a music producer, all the things I am. You see what I mean? So that's what I mean when I say I'm doing what I'm telling you to do, okay? So, 
Uh, number one, there's some luxury in Christ. There's forgiveness. There's the blood of Jesus. There's the name of Jesus. There's the grace of God. There's the mercy of God. There's being filled with the Spirit. There's the glory of God. There's the prophetic. And this is luxury in the Spirit. We can lay back in that. It's thick. It's fat. It's, it's rich. Okay? We're supposed to delight ourselves. We're supposed to, you know, let ourselves get caught up in the luxury that's in Christ. And then he puts those good things into our heart for us to do with our lives. And we also looked at, apart from him, what's going to come out of our heart when, we're, when that heart isn't filled with the desires from God. That's why you want God to give you the desires. You want God to put his good desires inside of you because apart from him, let me read that list again. Apart from him, what's going to come out of our heart? Evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. That's what's coming out of that heart if that heart hasn't been cleansed by the blood of Jesus and filled with the Holy Spirit of God and that heart and that mind renewed with the Word of God. Okay? And so then once that happens, then it's our dream to pursue it, to do it. Actually go out there and live your dream. And then number four, I talked about dream killers. The devil's going to try to get in your head. Sometimes your parents don't do their job and help establish you in your identity. Uh, let me tell you something I shared on a broadcast. I did an interview Friday. That'll be up on Wednesday. Let me tell you one of the things I shared. <clears throat> For every one negative word you hear, you need a minimum of five to seven positive words to counter it. So when your kids come home from school, if somebody got in their ear and said something negative about them, you have to say a minimum of five times. That's not true. You're beautiful or you're strong or mommy loves you or daddy believes in you or you can do it. you got to say that five times to counter that one negative word. Did you know that? That's why parenting is the hardest job in the world. But it's your parents' job to establish you in your identity because God will tell you who your children are before they're born. And then it's your job as a daddy and a mama to get that in their head so they can get on the right path. Is there a biblical example of that? Yes, there is. Hannah and Samuel. Hannah cried out to God to have children because she wasn't getting pregnant. She was in a plural family. Her husband had another wife, and that other wife was just popping out baby after baby after baby. So Hannah went to the Lord and, and said, God, please, please, God, give me a baby. And God told Hannah, this first child I give you, you're going to have to give him back to me because he's a prophet from the womb. So Hannah had Samuel. Hannah weaned him off the breast, and then Hannah took Samuel to the house of the prophets, and Samuel grew up under Eli. So he, when he got grown, he could prophesy to the nation of Israel because that was his purpose. Do you see that? So God is no respecter of person. So if God does that for Hannah, he'll do that for us. So it's your job as a daddy and a mama to ask the Lord, who is this child? If your child is supposed to play golf, don't put a baseball bat in their hand. If your child is supposed to sing, don't put a lawnmower in their hand. If your child is supposed to climb mountains, don't put a, a slide rule in their hand. Get your child on track by establishing them in their identity. Sometimes we do our job well as parents, sometimes we don't. And then another dream killer, dream snatcher is wicked people. People making fun of you, trying to make you feel like there's something wrong with you being you. There is nothing wrong with you being you. You're supposed to be you. Don't you know that when God knits you together in your mother's womb, when your father releases his seed into your mother, there's millions of sperm cells. Do you know what God does? God picks out the one he wants to be your body and lets that fertilize the egg. That's why you look the way you do. God literally, when God makes forms the babies in the womb, God has given himself millions of options through the seed of the man. There's a million different people you could have been for all the sperm cells that a man releases into the woman. And God looks at whatever sperm cell and whatever body he wants you to live in. That's the one he guides to fertilize your mom, to fertilize your mother's egg. And then that fertilized egg goes through the fallopian tube into the uterus and nestles in the uterine wall. And that iron-rich blood in the uterus begins to feed the baby, begins to feed you, so you can turn into you. Do you know what that means? That means that nothing about you is accidental. I mean, down to the shape of your nose, you got a big old nose like me. 
Nothing about you is accidental. You're supposed to be exactly who you are. So that being the case, what the devil does is he jumps in the heart of wicked people and bullies and makes them come into your ear when you're little to try to make you feel bad about being you. And if you do that, that's one of the ways the devil's trying to snatch that dream out your heart. You see that? So that's why we got to have safeguards. We got to fight. We got to fight to hold on to our dream, but we got to fight to live our dream. Can you see that? Okay. So I'm going to ask the question again. The prophetic word for today is, are you living your dream? Now you need to take a good, honest look at your life. You need to take a good, honest look at your life and ask yourself, Am I really doing what I want to do? Am I really doing what I was born to do? All the things that God has put in my heart, is that what I'm spending my days doing? Is that how I'm spending my time? Because if it's not, you're wasting your days. And one day you're going to be out of days. So I would counsel you, my brothers and my sisters, I would beseech you by the love and the mercies of God that if you don't know your purpose, seek God's face and ask him, Father God, why did you make me? Why am I like this? Why am I who I am? And what do you want me to do with my life? If you know, then I say, get busy. Because if you, if you know what you're supposed to do and you're not doing it, you're wasting. Wasting days that you're not going to get back. Okay? So I want to encourage you. Okay? I'm not trying to discourage you. I want to encourage you to get on out there and live that dream. All right? All right, do we have any prayer requests? If we have any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now, and I will pray for you. If we have any prayer requests, go ahead and put them on the screen. screen. All right. Now, as I tell you every week when you see me close my eyes and start to speak in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost about physical healing, casting out demons, and finances. Okay, so that's where we're going now. Okay, the Holy Ghost is saying somebody's having problems with their nose. Okay? Take your index finger, put it on your nose like this, and say, in the name of Jesus, I command my nose to be straight. In the name of Jesus, I command my nose to be healed. And in the name of Jesus, I command my sinuses to be open. In Jesus' name. Okay? And you'll feel the power of God flow through. Okay, must be something going on with the sinus. I'm seeing left eye and the sinus cavity up here. Put your hand on your forehead, those of you that, are, if you're experiencing any type of sinusitis, inflamed sinuses, allergies, okay? Say, in the name of Jesus, I command my sinuses to be open and to be every whit whole. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke any allergies and I command my immune system to be 100% whole. And in the name of Jesus, I command my eye to be 100% whole. I command perfect 2020 vision in my eye. No more pain, no more bloodshot eye. In Jesus' name, I command it. Amen. And you will feel the power of God, okay, flow into those areas, okay? Oh, yes. Okay, I got that anointing strong. The Holy Ghost is telling me to rebuke the spirit of dream killing. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you spirit of dream killing, discouragement, depression, mocking, scorning, unbelief. Okay, all those demons run together. In the name of Jesus, I cast you out. In the name of Jesus, every unclean spirit of discouragement, depression, un, uh, depression uh, unbelief, mocking, scorning, that is acting as a dream killer. That's trying to tell you, you can't do what God has created you to do. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the devil is a liar. And I cast you out. I break you off of their head. And I break you out of their heart and their life in Jesus' name. Because we can live our dream. And we will live our dream in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because the demons are subject to us in the name of Jesus. They have no power and no authority over us. See, I felt that when I said that. So that's for some, for me, but that's for somebody else out there too. I felt that when I said that because whenever you release 
the power of God by the Holy Spirit. You can feel it. It ain't no waiting seven days from now. The Lord never told nobody to wait no seven days from now before he healed them. Did he? Okay? So whoever that was for, besides me, you'll feel that break off you. You'll feel the power of God come through you to help you understand not only are you supposed to live your dream, but through the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, you can live your dream and you will live your dream in Jesus' name. All right, concerning finances, the word that the Lord has given me is to be open to new things, new income streams, maybe new relationships. What I'm hearing is be open. So maybe God is going to send you some new ideas or some new people or some new networking. But that's what I'm hearing in the spirit about the financial part is be open. Okay, if that's what the Holy Ghost is saying, then this week, be sure that you stay open. Because something's going to cross your path that you might not think is from God at first, but when you investigate it and examine it, you might find there's a blessing in it financially. Okay? Okay, that's it. Praise God. Well, thank you so much for tuning in live. Thank you for those of you that are watching the replay. Uh, again, you can watch the replay on Facebook Live, Periscope, or YouTube. And I encourage you again every week to watch the video because I give a lot of information. You're going to want to watch it more than once. Okay? So I want you to be encouraged. I want you to know to get out there and live your dream. That the Lord put those good desires in your heart so you're supposed to live them. So you're supposed to have them. Okay? And we cancel any negative words and we break off any dream-killing spirit that comes from the devil in the name of Jesus. Okay? All right. Let me pray a quick closing prayer. Thank you, Lord, so much. For your mighty word, thank you for the written word of God, oh God. Thank you for the living word. Thank you for the rhema word. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit, oh God. And we believe you, God. We receive and we believe. We want to HBO. We want to hear, believe, and obey. So we're going to go forward, oh God, as you've commanded us, and live our dream. And we're not going to let any dream-killing spirit or word stop us so we can make our contribution in this life as you have created us to do. And we thank you, Father, that you are a good God. And we thank you for all of the good desires that you have put in our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Amen and amen. Thank you for tuning in. I'll be here uh, same time next Sunday. And don't forget to tune in on the second Thursday of this month for the next installment of No More Genies. All right. Have a great rest of your Sunday and a great uh, rest of your week. And remember to live your dreams.